G'day, Nathan from Oziaka here. Just want to share with you some tips and tricks using the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Just continuing the series and I'm going to look at an article I wrote on the whole truth. That's uh, talking about looking at cutting holes for, gable, uh, for uh, dormer windows. So let's have a look at a typical uh, dormer roof scenario. I uh, just want to show you uh, a tip you might already know on the roof object, a simple one. You can see that I've got uh, a nice little uh, Dutch hip, some of you might call it, uh, on this end. And I'm just going to repeat that on this end. So I've got my height set, I've got my gable set, it's a, it's a gable end. And I'm going to click in here to create a second face. I'm going to change the slope to 35. I'm going to change the height to 900. Now that is the height above this height. So at what height we introduce a second slope and you'll see that it'll nicely chuff this roof off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this roof, which has got still got a hole in there. You can see the hole in the end. And I'm going to go up and select modify roof line. In that command line, you'll see an auto project. I'm going to select the roof, bang, and then that roof is going to slot up nicely into that end. Okay, done. Next, we've got a, a, an issue. Uh, well, firstly, how do you create the dormers? Uh, I would create a, a square. Uh, if you've got 2012, if you haven't, then you, you're a little bit longer, but I can simply click in that push that back uh, let's 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 create these these snap points and you can see that I can snap it back at 45 now if your roof your two roofs are not the same pitch obviously that valley won't be at 45 and you'll need to do a little bit more work and I can show you how to do that let's uh, create the gable uh, I just created a roof whoops and it's created it at zero degrees pitch for some reason we're just going to make it at 35, which is my main pitch. I'm going to change that to plumb. Now, to get that to a gable is very simple. Grab that, grab that, you're done. Okay, very simple. We're just going to abandon that roof for a minute. We're going to go back to our new ones. I want to know where this roof intersects with this roof. So we've got two roof objects, and I want to know where they intersect. If you see down here, you can see that this roof is not sitting flush or neatly with this roof it actually just pokes through now that might be good enough for your design development you've won the client they love it uh, now you've got to put it into drawings and you want to neaten that up you want to know well i want to show you how the roof object itself has that uh, tools Oops. Uh, okay so i'm just going to turn on a layer here now these this is a, a little diagram illustrating the roof object uh, dimensions that it gives you the eave height in the roof object is the height from the pitching point, the change. So that's normally used to indicate this distance out here. And we're going to actually use it, but we're going to use it to determine this distance back to, to whatever it is, okay? And let me demonstrate. So if we open the roof object, open that edge, we will see that we have a C, an eaves distance, and B, an overhang. All right. Now, this roof is pitching at six meters. This roof is pitching at seven and a half. You'll determine that in your design. That's the height that uh, you've got in your dormer window. Now, the distance difference is 1500. Now, can we use that? Now, this if I click on this, you notice that it was grayed out. If I click it to make it black and put in 1500, you'll notice that something changed now if i this is gray which means that the roof object will automatically adjust this because this is selected i'm going to select this slope and you'll see that this becomes black and this becomes gray that means the roof object will e adjust it and it just did but i want to grab that number so i click that click copy Control c and copy now i don't need that i don't need this setting i just needed that calculation so i can cancel that and we never get that long, ridiculously long eave. What I can now do is offset, and you can see that I've cheated. I've already used this before, but I'm gonna paste that, Control V, because we Control C copied, and now we're gonna Control V, return, and I'm going to shunt this line, offset this line into there. Now that tells me where this roof lands to that. So I'm gonna use my stretch command and stretch this forward to that point. Now you'll see that a line appeared. 
Why? Well, of course, because that is exactly the point where this roof intersects with that roof. So we get a very, very dead, dead accurate to the nth degree intersection between those two roofs. Fantastic. All right, let's just turn that off. And let's just um, stick that on the, oh, out on those layers and then turn that off. All right. Now, the next thing that we want to do is to work out how to actually create the holes. Now, what we do is you type in a command, model. Mod, I'm trying to type around your, your uh, microphone. Model Explorer, you can see that 2012 brings it up automatically. So Model Explorer, it's a command that Autodesk has hidden from you. It's not found on the ribbon until you create one, which is not very helpful. And you can see I've created one before that's somewhere else in the drawing, but we're not going to look at that. We're going to create a new one, and we're going to say New Grouping, and it's going to ask me what elements. And I'm going to connect this roof. And maybe I'll, I'll select this one as well. All right, I'm going to put it over there. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a mass group, a collection of a couple of bits and pieces. We've also got these symbols where we can edit in place, we can subtract elements, and we can attach elements. So how do we cut the hole? Well, it's very simply, you can see here that I've got a uh, mass element created, traced around that shape, and I've got one here. We're going to do the same thing, so convert to mass element, and say yes, arrange, erase line work and create it nine meters bang. Okay. Now what we do is we go back to our uh, our mass group. We attach more elements. So we're missing this one and this one. And I think we're missing this one as well. And you can see they all become part of the mass element. No, that's not part of it. So we go back and connect that one as well. And they all become part of the mass group. And if we go back, this is a modeless dialog box, so it can just stay off to one side while you're working. And you can see that uh, I want this to affect this roof, not not these little roofs. So we need there is an order to this, and you can see I can't change the order, and that's simply because I've got this selected back here. So we unselect that, and then we can work in the dialog box. Now what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you, we right click, Operation Subtractive. These things here are there to cut the hole. And if we have a look at the mass group, you will see that um, it's tiny. You can see that it hasn't quite done what I want. There's actually a hole in the top roofs, and that's because the order here is out of whack. Now you can see that we have exactly what we want and that's because this roof then subtract that subtract that then add that then add that and we get our beautiful mass group so we click back in here we have our mass group excellent our roof as we wanted now the mass element i can't say that i'm too much of an expert here at yet but it's an object uh you you will note that in the there is no styles in the roof object and when you add materials, you add them individually. Don't forget that uh, you, when you add the, it's not a style over, it's not an object override. It's just simply adding it to that uh, particular one. But don't forget that you can then use match properties to match around to other roofs. Now I'm not going to match to this roof because, uh, well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. The only thing is it's changed it to the wrong layer for me, but that's all right. It's now got the same material as my other roofs. No, it hasn't. Okay, so it doesn't match over. Uh, but you can match uh, between roofs. Okay, done. So now I have my roof that I wanted. It's got holes. And the nice thing about it is that over here you've got edit in place. Now I'm just going to lock. Like, so no, I'm not going to lock. Let's, let's say that my client uh, edits and makes their garage and their house bigger. Wow. Everything adjusts at once. Isn't that nice? And it's all there and adjusts. So you don't lose the intelligence of the roof object, but you can cut holes. You can do almost anything you want. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Cheers.